Brian and I had a lesson with Travis Johnson today, and I gotta tell you, it just changed my life. It changed my casting life. It like given me hope. So if you've reached a plateau and you you want to get better, I really strongly recommend get a lesson with Travis. Well, it was in person, you know, and I, as far as my YouTube channel is, I can get you pretty far, but I can only get you so far. An in-person lesson with Travis taught me not only a few little secret ninja cool things, but really what it did was simplified the whole process for me. So I'm not overwhelmed. I'm like, I can do this. It sounds technical, but it really simplified things. Um, can't say enough about it. In-person lessons are very, very helpful. If you can't get them, I'll do the best I can. And this will make me a much better instructor after working with Travis. He is a great instructor, very insightful. That was a much better turn there. Really just a nice guy and really passionate about fly fishing and spay casting in particular. So I highly recommend it. Uh, if you need to book a steelhead trip and get a guide and you want to work on your casting, um, the guy can cast anything and everything. This guy is brilliant. Book a trip, take a lesson, or do both. You will not be sorry. It's just eye-opening. If we're continually hitting the most amount of power into the spine, it actually reverberates and we're actually losing a little bit of tension. So the minute we rotate the rod 90 degrees, like even the saltwater casters, right? They turn their wrists like this. Yeah. Same idea. Um, so a good grip, will a loose grip anyway, will help that rod turn, number one, to get the spine correctly pointed and to get the reel out of the way. So I like how you're holding it. Just hold it looser. Okay. Now, if I was going to turn my wrist like you're curling yours in like this, and what happens is then you're fighting as you come around to get back to square so you can push, right? What I do, like if I'm really in the casting mood, the distance casting mood, I'll actually open my hand, push my hand away, almost like a golf grip until I can see the top two knuckles. So as I come around, look where I am already am. Yeah. And if you really watch like some of my video when I'm casting well, my, my palm actually opens up. I have to re-catch the rod. Because it's not that I'm not casting it, but like I have to re-catch the rod because that's I'm holding it that loose. If you were behind me and grabbed it and pull it clean out of my hand, right? So the concept of loading the rod and everything is a bit different. So let's ease up the grip. Your lip looked okay. Some of them were rushed. So literally, if I open it up, right, the weight of the reel is going to turn it down. There we go. Always oh, just casting on moving water. Too much overhang, we'll make it work. So I'll know this way here. If this reel's pointed 90 degrees, you've done it correctly. If it's pointed toward the target, I'm gripping too tightly. If it's like this, I don't know what happened, but that probably can't be that bad. You're still gonna whack against the other thing. Right? And again, I would actually start with your rod tip a little closer to the water. Right? Literally open it up here. You should be able to do this with almost no. No, and again, I, that's a lot of distance my hands have to travel. I'd rather just start with them on the left side so they're already where they need to be, as far as that goes, if that makes sense. So then again, all I'm really doing is setting the key position and they're raising vertically as opposed to coming across. So if I had a zipper on, I would make sure my bottom hand was at least at the zipper. So everything's here. Very little movement. Now, the load of the rod is everything is, if you watch my shoulder square, that's where the power is, is this gap. So if I'm here, I, I, can't, I take away from the turn of my body because I now have to use my hands to get the rod all the way over here. When you look, really look at it in slow motion, you're moving your hands feet. When I'm moving my hands inches, I'm just drifting. Like I said, at any point in time, you could grab this rod clean out of my hand. So I'm just making sure I'm, I'm going to cast on the left. It's going to come off the left. 
So, speaking of anchors, like, where do you want that anchor? So, this is, <laughs> this would solve many of the problems in bay casting. I would rather define anchor placement than grain weight. Because what I've noticed, is people that like their anchors out here, they like light lines. People that like their anchors out there, like heavy lines. And they'll fight over that till the end, but they won't ever agree where to put the anchor. Like, yeah, you've been in fly shops and you're like, oh, I have a, you know, 14 foot, whatever. And they go, oh, one guy's like, you need 570. And some other dudes over there's like, you need 700. And you're like, I don't even use a scad. You should get this. And you're like, what the hell do you guys know? Like, I'm more confused now than when I can <laughs> Or whatever. Like, let's say that um, little fence viewing no. over there is my target, right? So what I do is I dissect myself into cords. So this is my left and this is my right. And this line we're gonna pretend runs indefinitely both directions. The other one is front and back. We're gonna go like this. This is in front of me, this is behind me. We can agree on all that, right? So perfect anchor would land in the front quadrant on the side you're casting off of. And this line of front and back delineation, the rear end of your anchor is close to that. It, I mean, if it goes a little bit over, that's going to happen. If it goes a lot over, that's not that good. And there's a really easy drill. So if we pick a mark here, we cross up the water, and that's our kind of our front to back line there. My goal is to keep the line in front of that, no part of it actually touching the water. You saw that? Yep. Almost ripped the tip of your rod off. But that's the idea. So when you're practicing, those are the kind of things I would practice. You can put like a submerged rope or something there right so my goal is for that never to actually touch the water behind that gotcha and yeah. when, you can, when scandinavian casting first became popular yeah you would notice as a guide you would just watch and watch and watch you're watching for fish but you watch a lot of casts as well right? what would happen is if i just do like some casts the more i put my anchor back here the more rounded they are, yeah. right? Yeah. And you can get some real pointy ones made. But we notice if we keep the line more out in front of us, yeah. it's a lot more dynamic. So you, that's all you're doing. Yeah. Again, even that one wasn't that great. If I go way out here with my hands like this, yeah. even that's going to go. And I, I don't know if I can get it much more than a job length and a half if we set up, but I'd rather have it there than back there right so get that hands on the same side you know you can always go like this this is kind of where we want it and i use them as targets right it comes a little bit over that's fine we don't want feet inches are fine right? So the whole goal i i mean i did this for so long it's unbelievable i would have said that was a fail didn't quite have enough So, don't think I came back this way. I mean, that's the greatest thing about like really slow water. Here it is. No extra power. Power. <laughs> nice.